This is part 11 in our series of lectures on section 2.5 on other forms of induction. Once again, we're continuing uh, a short series of lectures on algebra. In this lecture, we're going to give another application of the division algorithm to modular arithmetic. Here's the fundamental definition. We let m be a fixed natural number and give ourselves integers x and y. We say that x is congruent to y modulo m if m divides the difference x minus y. And we use either this notation or this notation to indicate that y is congruent, or rather x is congruent to y modulo m. So here are three examples. 17 is congruent to 2 modulo 5 because 17 minus 2, which is 15, is divisible by 5. 1,000 is congruent to 1 modulo 9, because 1,000 minus 1 is 999, is divisible by 9. And 18 is congruent to 38 modulo 4, because 18 minus 38 is minus 20, and that's divisible by 4. Now look at this last one, and let's look at it in a different way. Instead of subtracting 18 minus 38, Divide each of 18 and 38 separately by 4 and observe what the remainder is. 18 divided by 4 is 4 with a remainder of 2. And 38 divided by 4 is 9 with a remainder of 2 also. I claim that it's not an accident that that happened. We're going to prove that if x and y are any two integers and m is a fixed natural number, then x is congruent to y modulo m if and only if both x and y have the same remainder upon division by m. What we mean by that is that if we apply the division algorithm to x and m, where m is the divisor, and we apply the division algorithm to y and m, again where m is the divisor, the remainder comes out the same in both cases. So let's first try to prove the forward direction, assuming that x is congruent to y modulo m. See if you can prove that the remainders come out the same in both cases when you apply the division algorithm. Why don't you give the proof a try yourself? You'll get more out of my solution if you've put some thought into it. So put your video on pause and give the forward direction a try. Here's my proof of the forward direction. We're going to assume that x is congruent to y modulo m. That means that m divides x minus y. So next we're going to apply the division algorithm first to m and x and then to m and y. m is going to be the divisor in both cases. So that means we can write x in this form. We can write y in this form for integers q1, r1, q2, r2, where the remainders satisfy these inequalities here. Since r1 and r2 both lie between 0 and m, it follows that their difference in absolute value must be strictly smaller than m. Now, look at this equation and this equation and subtract them. That gives you an expression for x minus y, and that's equal to this minus this. Um, if we factor out a common m and group the terms accordingly, we get this equation here. Now look at the, of these three terms, look at the ones which are divisible, which you know to be divisible by m. We're assuming that x minus y is, di is divisible by m, and this is obviously divisible by m, and therefore this difference, this minus this, must be divisible by m, and that means r2 minus r1 must be divisible by m. But that's impossible because r2 minus r1 in absolute value is smaller than m. So the only way that r2 minus r1 could be divisible by m would be if it were 0. So in other words, r2 must equal r1. And that's what we were trying to prove, right? We were trying to prove that the remainders come out the same when we divide each of x and y by m. So that completes the proof of the forward direction. That's the harder direction. 
The other direction is actually very simple, and I'm going to leave that for you to do as an exercise. So that brings us to the idea of modular arithmetic. So let's give ourselves four integers, x's and y's, and we're going to give ourselves um, an m, a natural number, and we're going to assume that the x's are congruent modulo m and the y's are congruent modulo m. And then the, the idea of modular arithmetic is that any arithmetic we do with x1 and y1 comes out the same as the same arithmetic that we do with x2 and y2 um, if we're only interested in the arithmetic being done modulo m. And so that's the content of this. If we add x1 and y1, um, then that is going to be congruent to the corresponding sum x2 plus y2 if we do it modulo m. And similarly, if we do the products, then they come out the same, modulo m. So this is quite a nice result, um, because it's telling you that if x1 and y1 are rather large numbers for which uh, either one of these calculations is complicated, um, if we reduce x1 and, and y1 modulo m so as to get a much smaller number, we can just simply do the arithmetic with the smaller numbers, and uh, the theorem tells you that it really comes out the same. Well, I'm not going to do the proof for you. The proof is, is a fairly nice exercise. The first one is pretty simple, but the second one is, is a little bit harder. But I think we're going to revisit that during uh, either on a guided practice or a class activity. But I wanted to show you uh, an application of the theorem. So this is a result that we looked at much earlier on in the course. Um, this was actually an example that we did of the principle of mathematical induction. And at the time I told you that um, at some point this might be completely obvious to you why this is the case. And so th this is what I was referring to. In order to show that 8 divides 5 to the 2n minus 1, that's another way of saying that 5 to the 2n is congruent to 1 modulo 8. But 5 to the 2n is the same as 25 to the n. And so we're asked to show that 25 to the n is congruent to 1 mod 8. Well, it's obvious that 25 is congruent to 1 mod 8, um, because 25 minus 1 is equal to 24, and 8 divides 24. Oh, by the way, there's a little typo here. The parenthesis should be on the other side of the 8. So if you apply part 2 of the theorem, in other words, you multiply 25 by itself n times, that must be congruent to 1 multiplied by itself n times. In other words, 25 to the n is congruent to 1 to the n modulo 8. 1 to the n, of course, is just 1. And so that gives you the result. So it's really a very simple application of this result applied n times.